Now it's your time to securely deploy your REST endpoints, which will only enable authorized users to access your database. How can you do this? Do your access management with Microsoft Enter ID. And also follow me along at aka.ms slash quickasa6 and let's do that together. So to go from zero to hero, we either have to set up the project using AZD in it, or we just clone the repository from GitHub. So I will run the git clone command and use the Azure samples, ASA samples REST for application here. So that one will give me the code, but also the infra folder where I see the bicep files, which are specifying my infrastructure that I want to set up here. So I want to have my Azure Spring Apps cluster with Azure Container Apps under the hood, as well as the PostgreSQL server in the flexible option. So I would just CD into the folder and now run the Maven Watch Spring Boot Run command to see if everything is working fine locally. You can see that our app is running locally perfectly fine. There's the RESTful APIs for our simple to do app, which are now available, but only locally, right? And we want to have it on the cloud. So let's create the cloud resources within the portal. So let's first search for Azure Spring Apps and I will create a new Azure Spring Apps instance. I will create a new resource group and I will give my service a new name and it needs to be a unique name. So I guess I will call it Senra to do API and now I can select the region. I can stick with East US or select East US 2 or pick whatever is closest to me or where I know it has green energy resources or whatever I like. And I would go with the standard consumption and dedicated plan because this one will run on Azure container apps under the hood. And I really love this opportunity to only pay for what I need and also scale to zero. I will have to create a new container apps environment because I don't have one. Right? And here I can go with the consumption based plan or I go with the consumption and dedicated workload profiles. And I don't need zone redundancy for this quick start. It also adds an automatically a monitoring system for me. So I could have chosen not to enable application insights, but why wouldn't I want monitoring just like that? So now I can just hit create. Here we see the deployment is in progress and why it's in progress. Let's use the time and already create our PostgreSQL server. I will select the Azure databases for PostgreSQL flexible service. Let's put in the same resource group. This way I can easily share it with my colleagues and coworkers, and I can also delete it very easily afterwards. Let's name it. I will put it in the same region because I will also put it in the same resource group and I will use the latest PostgreSQL version, which is uh, already predefined for myself. Workload type development, it's just fine. So I don't need the geo redundancy. I don't have preferences for availability zones. I don't need high availability for my development uh, testing here. And now the authentication method. For authentication, I will use the PostgreSQL authentication only. And let's set the admin username with my admin and also set the password. Make sure to save the password. We're going to use it as an environment variable to put it for our application. In a real world scenario, you would use keyword for something like this, but for our development example here, I guess it's fine if we just store it in the environment variable following the 12 factor apps best practices. Next is networking. I will allow public access to this Azure service for all other Azure services, just to um, be very quick in connecting my service running on Azure Spring Apps with the PostgreSQL database. Keep in mind that for a real world scenario, you would have to ensure that only the application, so only your REST service has access to this database or any other services which should have access to this and not just everyone. While our PostgreSQL server is getting created, I can already put the environment variables towards our Spring Apps cluster to make sure that it can access it afterwards. So let's create a new application under our Azure Spring Apps resource. I will go on apps and then hit create a new app. I will call it to do. I will select the Java artifacts and I'm fine with the consumption and also the memory here. Let's see if we can already set the environment variables while it's getting created. So we, I just clicked on it and now I select configuration. 
and select environment variables. To set environment variables for our Spring app, we can put them into the environment variables configuration under Azure Spring apps. And that's what we're going to do now. First, because I still have it copied, I will put in the password. I have the Spring data source username, which was my admin. For the Spring data source URL, we have to wait until the PostgreSQL server got created. And guess what? It's just finished. Let's save it as it is and go towards the PostgreSQL flexible server, which just got created to copy the URL. So let's go back here. For the database URL, let's first create the database because otherwise something is missing, right? So I now create the database called to-do to save all my to-dos that I'm creating with my API. And under connect, you can find connect from your app and here you can copy paste the one for JDBC but as we are giving it the user and password separately, we can copy everything until here. And I go back to my Azure Spring Apps instance, select my app to do, go to configuration, environment variables, and put it here. So that's for our overall PostgreSQL flexible server. And we created the to-do database. So let's add this here as well, slash to-do, and click save. We want to make sure that only allowed users or APIs can actually change and access our data. And that's what Microsoft Enter ID is for. So let's create a new set of permissions to create new to-do items, delete to-do items, or edit them. So on Microsoft Azure, I will search for Enter ID and select Microsoft Enter ID here. Now I will click on Add and create a new app registration. For supported account times, I will select the accounts in any organizational directory and also personal Microsoft accounts. I call it to-do service. And that's all I need to do to register. On the overview page, let's have a look for the application ID. We need to save the client ID for later. Okay, I copy that. Great, now under manage, let's select expose an API. The application ID URI needs to be unique. That's why it's suggesting me something. I can leave it as it is, or I choose something a bit more meaningful, but still unique. Click on save and continue. Okay, and now I can use something like to do it. Read the to do data, to do data. And let's add the scope. And let's do also the same to edit and click on add scope. I want to create a new one also to delete and edit the data and click add scope. Let's now update our application configuration so that our Spring service can actually use the Entra ID specifications we have just made. So under source main resources, you can find the application YAML file, which is already created for you. And here you can see that we need to specify the tenant ID as well as the credentials client ID and the app ID URI. So let's find them together. I will go to the portal again and click on overview here. So here we have the application ID, which is also the client ID. And then I need the app ID URI, and that's here. And here you can also find the tenant ID, the directory tenant ID. Let's copy that and paste it here as well. Okay, great. That should enable now our Spring REST API service to access the Entry ID specifications we've just done before. Wonderful, so what have we achieved so far? We already created our Azure Spring Apps instance in the cloud. We set our PostgreSQL server, we saved all the environment variables to be able to connect towards our PostgreSQL, and we also set some rules for Microsoft Entry ID. Why don't we give it a try and deploy our Spring app now towards Azure Spring Apps and see if everything runs together. Okay, let's now use the drag and drop experience to just deploy it super quick and fast. You could also do the same using the Maven plugin, but I would just go with drag and drop for now. So I select my Azure Spring Apps instance. I go to apps and then here you can see next to the deployment state, not deployed, deploy app. And here I can easily browse for files or drag and drop the existing one. Great. Here you can find the ASA sample RESTful application and under target, my Java got created and let's open that up and click on deploy. 
Congratulations, we can now validate the app and see if our resource provider, so to say, is working correctly. Of course, we secured everything using Entry ID from Microsoft Azure. So let's first enable another front-end application to actually access the application and validate if everything runs smoothly. I will need to register another application in Microsoft Entry ID to grant permissions to the client application, which is named to the web. So let's first register the client application. I will open up the Azure portal to do so. And here I will click new registration and name it for instance to do. For supported account types, use the default value accounts in this organizational directory only. Select register to create the application. Okay, so we successfully created the to do web application. Okay, we should copy now the application client ID for later use as we have to register the API permissions. So I will go on API permissions and then click on add a permission and then my APIs and then I select my to do REST service and then here I have my to do delete, to do read and to do write because I want all these permissions to be added, but you could also do it a bit more fine granular. So I will select all of them, the to do delete, the to do read and the to do write. But you could even make your choice, but to test all the endpoints, I will select all of them here and add the permissions. Now we click on grant admin consent for default directory. That enables me to use all the deletion, reading and writing because remember, we advise that only administrators can execute these operations. Okay, so now let's add our user to this one. For that one, I will go to owners and then click on add owners and then select myself. And yeah, once I'm selected, I will appear here. So this one will make me to log in with my normal credentials here. You could have also specified a new user with username password. It's like you wish. So what we have to do now is copying the client ID of our to do web app in entry ID. We will need that to log into our Swagger UI later on. So now we go on the Azure Spring apps page. So I find that under apps, then select my simple to do API and here click on the URL provided. So, and then I go on authorize and I will only give it the client ID. Remember the one we, I've just copied it from extra ID and then I select all the scopes and click on authorize. Now I have to log in with my user, the one I specified before. Great. Since I'm now authorized, I can use here the gets, puts, deletes. So, and since we don't have anything here yet, why don't we give it a shot and try it out? So I click on try it out and here on request body, I would just give it a name and say, hello world and execute it. And here I get my response, 201 hello world. So now I have three items in my list. Why don't we get all the items, right? So I will just try it out, the get request, execute, and there we go. So as you can see, I did some my lists earlier and now I could also delete it and I can play around with my API. How wonderful is that? We went from zero to hero. We deployed our application, our REST API on Azure Spring apps. We have PostgreSQL in place and we secured everything with extra ID. So nobody can access my API that I didn't allow to earlier. And we secured it all the way. So with Microsoft extra ID, we are ensured that only administrators can read and delete and write new data into my to-do list and on the PostgreSQL server. And don't miss your chance to try it out yourself right now. Hop on aka.ms slash quickasa6 and write in the comments how it is working for you. And if you have any questions or you can't go further, use the comments. Happy coding and talk to you very soon.